Hi, my name is Heron Bray. Welcome to the Wild Green World. And today I'm here in Southern California outside of San Diego. And we're at the San Elijo Lagoon Ecological Reserve. And I'm going to do a little plant walk looking at the native edible and medicinal plants as well as some of the edible weeds that we can find around here. So let's check out this plant here. This is a sage brush. It's not a true sage, but it's a sage brush. It's in the Asteraceae or the sunflower family. And so, this is Artemisia californica or California sagebrush. It's got these really interesting linear leaves that are that have these very finely divided sections. You can tell it has that really smelly aromatic flavor, but it's also kind of bitter. So it stimulates the digestion, basically. Anything that's aromatic and bitter stimulates the digestion and it'll help get your get everything functioning more. It gets your digestive juices flowing. And, and sagebrush in particular is really nice as a mouthwash. It'll like cleanse if you make it into a tincture or something. It's also, this is a very strongly disinfecting plant. People, so yeah. people burn sagebrush as a disinfectant for the air. It'll cleanse and clear the air, but it's also good internally for infections and um, killing off bad microbial stuff. Yeah. Does it work as a topical? As yeah. Well. Mm -hmm. Not only internal, but can you make a salve or a cream? Out Absolutely. Of it? Yeah, it would, it would work. Yeah, it works really good for that too. Oh, look! Here's the sagebrush bl blooming. They look. They're so nondescript. You can hardly even tell that they're flowers. You might just walk by them. But these are little clusters of Asteraceae flowers, all packed into a head. So here we're looking at a salvia species. The salvia mellifera, the black sage. I'm noticing that it has opposite leaves on the stem and it's kind of sticky a little bit when I touch it when I squeeze it and the leaves are smooth and kind of leathery on top and they're hairy on the bottom. I also noticed one of the characteristics of the genus salvia is this inflorescence where it has these cute little clusters of flowers. It has these really typical sage flowers, salvia flowers that shows you this is in the mint family. It's got this tubular flower that's all fused together and it's got two lips, one big lobe on the bottom and one big lobe on the top. This is also a bitter aromatic, so it can be used for the same things that the sagebrush can be used for. And I also like the sages or the salvias as a anti-inflammatory. Um, they're cooling. In, internally. So here I found a bunch of wild oats. This is a, in the grass family. They're just like really beautiful. They've got these white bracts on the outside and then the two um, grains tucked on the inside and they have these long twisting awns that stick out of them and they're all hairy. If I squeeze them, you know, in here there's this fat grain. Well, I was wondering if you harvested enough, could you, you know, make oatmeal or an oat flour with it? Um, yeah, I guess it depends on how much work you want to do, you know? <laughs> uh, harvesting you know, grains in general is a lot of work, and then you have to separate all the, all the hard, yeah. tough stuff from the actual good grain. So for a wild food, it's probably not something that you really want to deal with. But what people do use this for and can use it for is medicine. If you harvest the, the milky oat tops, these grains that have all that good milk in it, you can um, uh, use the straw itself as also. And milky oats are a really good soothing, calming herb. They're good for the nervous system and they, they nurture and strengthen uh, the nerves and it's just really gentle, calming influence. This is a malva, malva neglecta, or it's also called cheese weed, wild mallow, and it's got these interesting palm shaped leaves. The veins in the leaf come from the center and they go out towards the side and it's got these kind of really gentle lobing on the outside. Malvas are delicious food. They're kind of slimy so they're also used as demulcents similar to the milky oat. Very nutritious and good. Demulcents are actually really good as a um, prebiotic. Oh. So they help nurture the digestive flora and feed the, feed the flora in your, in your intestines. Yeah, so they're good as a, a long-term tonic. It's called cheeseweed because the fruits look like little cheese wheels, but I can't find any on this plant. <laughs> yeah, the fruits are really yummy too. Yeah, the fruits are really good to eat too. It's got these very typical yellow brassicaceae flowers. This is in the mustard family. 
with four petals in a cross shape. And it's got these kind of hairy, fuzzy leaves. They're kind of almost prickly. They've got one big lobe at the bottom and then like paired leaflets going down that get smaller on the way down. This and it spreads really prolifically by seed. It's just a lot more vigorous and it comes up earlier in the spring than the, than the native annuals do. So by the time the native annuals germinate, these got these big leaves all covering the ground and it just takes up all the resources. But it is edible, so we could eat the leaves. It's a little intense. I'm gonna try it. That's actually not bad. That's pretty soft, actually. If you want to. All right, so this plant that we're in front of is a really typical, very common member of the coastal chaparral, all down here in uh, southern and central California coast and up into the mountains. Uh, commonly, it's called lemonade berry. Um, so, Ruth integrifolia or lemonade berry. And it's got these thick, leathery leaves, and this one has kind of spiny margins on it. And look at all these amazing berries that are just loaded up on these branches here. So um, these are edible. Go ahead and try one if you want. Tell me what you think. They're kind of slimy. They're, they're, yeah, they're kind of slimy, huh? Do you just suck on it or yeah. you chew it? I try sucking first, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't really like to eat the inner. There's some kind of inner hard seed yeah, that just, I just spit out. Yeah. There. Also the leaves, they're a really good astringent medicine. So they're good for uh, shrinking, drawing and drying any kind of swollen tissue. They'd be good for any kind of infected cut or a, you know, an eye infection or swollen gums, things that where you need to um, shrink the tissue up. So, and you can tell it's astringent when you taste it, it whoo, immediately dries up your mouth. It just completely sucks out all the moisture from your tongue. Behind me, I'm standing in front of a salt marsh field and the dominant plant in this area is salicornia or glasswort. And this is a plant that's in the Kenopodiaceae, which is also the quinoa family. And a lot of plants in this family have developed a ad adaptation where they can deal well with salt. So this plant is a halophyte, it loves salt. You can see there's this firm line. Uh, ups, once you start going uphill, other vegetation dominates. But when this whole area will get inundated with salt water, and so it's one of the only things that can grow there. So check out this plant's body. It's so interesting. It's really fleshy, and it's the stem is jointed, and it's got these little leaves coming off of the nodes um, that are really just plump and crisp. So I can break it at the nodes. And this is an edible plant. It's really salty. And it's kind of cool because it it's like a crunchy sea vegetable. You could make salads out of it. So I do want to caution that a lot of times, especially in urban estuaries where this grows, there's going to be a lot of toxins in the environment. So it's probably wise not to eat large quantities of this or just be aware of what kind of pollutants might be in your environment before you go and uh, harvest and eat a lot of this. Here I am standing next to agave plants. This is agave shawyai. I personally think agaves are one of the sexiest plants out there. Very sensual, beautiful shape and curve. I love this one. They don't all have spikes on the side of the leaves like this, but I really love this one for its purple hit tinge and the little spines on the side of the leaf. Oh, it's just gorgeous. Other species of the genus agave have been used in Mexico to make tequila and also the sweetener agave syrup. I have also read, I have never tried it, but I've read that native people living off the land would use the hearts of the agave as food, the heart of the, of the whole leaf whirl. Hope you learned a thing or two today about edible and medicinal plants here in Southern California. And thank you so much for joining me on the Wild Green World. See you next time.